Uh, hello, everybody. I'm very happy to, to be able, due to this fantastic uh, technological tool, uh, to be together uh, today. Um, we are getting used to these tools uh, now that uh, it's quite impossible to travel. But uh, it is still quite challenging to organize meetings and uh, workshops and, and training sessions with these tools, even if we are getting used to it. But anyway, it is great to be able to be with you today uh, for the first webinar of this uh, fourth training session of YNC project. I will briefly present uh, some uh, basic elements of one c project um, and then I will ask you to present yourself briefly also because we don't have a lot of time but it's very important that you have the occasion uh, to express yourself and, and mo most of all um, present yourself and your project briefly. And then um, Emma, will st Emma Ro Rochelle Newell, who is our supreme leader uh, during this session, uh, she will <clears throat> start the, the training. I announce uh, that we will have a short break in about one hour, time for us to refill our cup of coffee, but it will be like five minutes, a very short break in one hour. The session will last until, um, so it's two o'clock for you. So this, the, 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 this webinar lasts two hours, right? So uh, this is about, uh, oh, somebody is coming. Petit okay. This is about producing knowledge, um, uh, how to write a research paper, okay? So if I'm not wrong, all right. So just to go back to the context, uh, we, are we, are, we are organizing this, uh, this training, this e-training session, online training session, or it should be O-training session actually. But it is uh, within the project WANASI, strengthening um, capacities in the, the research and uh, teaching in the area of uh, water and uh, natural resources management in Southeast Asia, WANASI. Uh, in the framework of this, uh, in the framework of this project, five training sessions are planned. The three first ones were about genesis of research, science, knowledge, and society. Second one, project design: how to write a scientific proposal. The third one was about implementing research, methodological and management challenges, and finally, here, producing knowledge, writing a research paper. This uh, training session was supposed to be um, uh, as uh, li like the other ones. Uh, it was originally planned in uh, uh, Bangkok, if I'm not wrong, in, in uh, February, but has not been possible. Uh, then it, has, it was postponed in, uh, in uh, September also in, in physical presence, but it was not possible. So we decided to organize it this way. Uh, generally, these sessions last one week, uh, but uh, because it, it is online this time, um, and also because of the, the, the subject of the training session about writing a research paper, we considered that it was impossible to be online for even six hours during your day, full day online, impossible, just your mind blows. Um, so um, we changed the methodology compared to the others. And um, what is this? Oh yeah, uh, uh, the, the session will last longer, but uh, the, the work won't be concentrated on one week, obviously. It's only five webinars during the first week, then homework with mentoring and then feedback. Okay, the last training session should be probably in January, probably online, considering the situation. Uh, and the subject is about communication in research, how you disseminate your knowledge, uh, how you teach, how you're, you're, you're present in a, in a, in a conference, etc. 
So uh, we'll let you know how it works. The objective of these training sessions is to, the general objective is to improve the quality of teaching and research in the field of water uh, and natural resources management. But uh, it is also to foster the creation uh, of uh, something that we could call teaching and research support units among um, your institutions, strengthening uh, their capacities in producing and, uh, and disseminating knowledge related to water and natural resources management. We also have the huge ambition to enhance multidisciplinary research since uh, water and natural resources um, issues can't be um, uh, studied only through one discipline because the complexity of uh, these issues requires definitely more than one uh, discipline. So um, we promote a multidisciplinary approach uh, of these issues. Uh, the objective is also to strengthen the cooperation between researchers and staff among uh, higher education institutions. Most of all, considering that very often there is a gap between staff, administrative staff and, um, and uh, researchers. And this gap is, uh, is uh, definitely not uh, mutually benefic. So we, we promote uh, an approximation uh, between researchers, uh, scientists, and people supporting their work. And uh, these webinars, uh, these uh, training sessions are also uh, supported by uh, other extra activities related to networking, uh, which is an important part of Guanasi project. So, as I said, for this uh, e-training session, we'll have three phases. This first phase is this week. Daily 120 minutes webinars combined with homework to be sent to trainers. Phase two will be personal work uh, on your papers um, with uh, regular interaction with, uh, with fantastic people who who accepted to be mentors for these uh, three weeks of, uh, of work. So all of you will be assigned uh, one mentor. Uh, I, I'm currently trying to match the mentors with, with the subject. Uh, well, the good news is that we have 10 mentors available. So it's great, they will, be, they will have time for you. Uh, to interact with you, to read what you will write, to, to comment, to but to to with in, in to criticize uh, in a very positive way, of course, uh, and constructive way. And after these three weeks of uh, personal work and interactions with your train with your mentors, uh, we thought that it would be very important to to give feedback. Uh, for, for you to give feedback uh, about your work and to present the results. So uh, this is something very important that uh, you have to start thinking about, is that you need, well, we need this Friday, you to, to, to formulate what is your objective for phase two meaning that um, I would like us to be clear about the fact that this phase two needs to um, allow you to achieve one objective. For some of you, it will be to write the best conclusion ever. For others, it will be to really polish my paper because it's almost done, but some things are not clear and I will benefit from the reading of uh, 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 the mentor of his, his, his advice or her advices. Um, for other, it will be just starting to write the structure of the paper. Anyway, all of you are at different stages of the writing of your paper, of your research paper. So what is important is that you have in your mind clear, a, a clear objective 
of what you need and what you want to do uh, at the end of, uh, of these three weeks of phase two. So uh, the 9th of October, you will have achieved your objective, hopefully. And the week after, um, you will be able to present um, your paper. You will have uh, some comments from other trainers, trainees, sorry, with the support of your mentor who will be online with you. So I'm not sure we'll be able to present all the words. We have 90 minutes for four days, which should be good enough to, to, to have at least, I hope, four. So it should be seven, 16, or maybe, maybe, maybe 18 will be possible. But anyway, this is the objective. And the, the last webinar will be uh, just a wrap up and, uh, and uh, a moment uh, where we will get feedback uh, for, uh, oh, we have 27 participants now, but that's good uh, for, for, for the old session. Okay, so it's 7.15. Um, all right, I, I've put that here, but um, you have it in the um, the document I sent you yesterday um, with all the um, the biographies of the men, of the uh, trainers and mentors, and also the presentation of uh, um, the trainer trainees projects. So this is the program of the week. Uh, today we will, after my introduction, we'll work on identification of the right journal, how to read and critique a scientific paper um, or original article, uh, review articles, methods, uh, uh, data papers, editorial comments, and, and Emma will uh, start that later. Um, this is a methodology we also general principle we try to promote. Participation, very important. We learn all together. I know uh, distance learning is not very uh, supportive for that, but uh, try to remember that uh, it is very important to communicate. If you have things to say, uh, you might say it, but it's even better to write it in this case, because if we we are 27 people now, if we all speak all together, it won't be possible. But if you have questions, please formulate your questions. Uh, don't be shy. We are really easy going here. Even if it's uh, quite early in the morning, we are supposed to understand what you say and what you write. Uh, here it's about sharing experience. It is also why you will have to send as uh, you, some of you, not all of you, but some of you did yesterday, send your homework to your, uh, your colleagues. Um, uh, by the way, it is very important to you to do the homework. Uh, boy, I, received, I received some of them uh, right this morning, but some of them are missing still. Um, you won't have the certificate if you don't participate actively to the course, all right? Let me be clear about that. Uh, you have uh, here 11 people mobilized to, to organize this uh, this e-training session. It is a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of energy. So please respect that doing your part. It is very important for us. And you see, it is also the way you will uh, get the benefits, the benefits of this training session. Uh, if you don't actively participate, you will waste your time and you will waste our time too, which is bad. Um, so we will try to give you practical practical tools and learnings, things that will be useful, things that you will be able to use uh, later. You will uh, have access to uh, documents, files, and uh, and all the PowerPoints we will present, you will have them, so you, you can read them again and again and again and again. Um, and uh, trainers are here to support your work, accompany the group, characteristic of the group is, as I said, very various. Uh, we have a diversity of uh, projects, of professional stages, of uh, uh, concerns, so, um, 
it might be considered as uh, something complicated to deal with, but we really like that diversity. Diversity is life. Uh, biodiversity uh, is uh, is uh, something uh, essential in life, like sapio diversity. Sapio meaning uh, knowledge, basically. Uh, so this is exactly the point. Let's share our knowledge. Let's share our uh, experiences. So thank you for having listening this. So I'm Benjamin, uh, I'm a socioeconomist and uh, I live in Bordeaux. And for those who don't know me, I'm responsible of these training sessions for one SE project. Uh, I would like now you to present yourselves, um, but quickly because uh, we, 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 we need to move on. So just tell me who you are, uh, what is your general um, uh, your general uh, domain uh, of a, of a scientific domain of a, of a specialty, and uh, and where do you where do you work? And I will kindly ask to Emma Rochelle Newell to start her presentation uh, to present herself since she will be our uh, our uh, main uh, trainer all the week and uh, and uh, if she can turn on her camera and present herself that would be fantastic emma hello oh yes my camera are... not work i thought it was on okay here you go yes yes it works Hi, so I'm Emma Rochelle Newell. I'm a researcher in the French uh, Institute for Sustainable Development, the IRD, and I'm a e microbial ecologist. So um, I look at the interactions between bacteria and um, aquatic ecosystems. And I have been giving uh, this type of um, training course for several years now, um, but it's the first time I will have done it entirely on Zoom. So please be patient with me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emma. So what I will do is that I will simply call uh, the, the names that I see on my screen uh, one after the other, otherwise I will totally lost uh, the tracking of uh, the people. So, uh, Kao Ti Han Sao, <laughs> can you present yourself? I think it's Mai, actually. I will, I, I'm asking the activation of your microphone. Yeah. yeah. I'm so sorry because I, uh, my friends, uh, uh, assess my account, so now I still to report my uh, account. And um, hello everyone, my name is Mai. I come from Graduate Academy of Social Sciences, Vietnam. And uh, uh, I work, yeah. And the reason why I, I, I want to join this, this class is because I, I really cons I really uh, interested in uh, know how to public in internet in the pub, uh, scientific paper, especially international um, paper, because something is quite different between the, the way Vietnam, uh, I mean, the content uh, of the, the, the scientific paper in Vietnam and in the interna international. So that is the reason why I take part in this course. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I'll now ask Kong to present himself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello everyone. I don't know how to say afternoon or morning. So morning. just everyone. Yeah, my name is Chun Kong. I'm from Cambodia as a lecturer researcher at Institute of Technology of Cambodia. So my um, field of research is on hydrology and water resources engineering yeah. okay. so i expect that uh, i will give uh, the work that i'm going on I'm, I'm now working on it with my mentor and to improve on my paper okay thank you thank you kong 
Now I'll ask Diwan to present himself. Okay. Now the video is on. Can you see me? Hopefully, yes. You're in the sky. Yeah. Yes. I am Diwan Hassan. I am working as an associate professor of University of Southern Denmark, which is located in <clears throat> a city called Esbia. Uh, my academic and research background is in natural resource management. I have a PhD in risk and safety management. And uh, I have been involved in teaching a couple of courses like risk management, stakeholder management, uh, emergency management, and green business. And I am also involved with research and also with consultancy work in Southeast Asia, South Asia, and also Europe, especially in Nordic countries for one or two decades, about two decades. Here, my role is as a mentor. Uh, it is my apology that I could not be involved directly heavily as a trainer because my three courses are running and within half an hour I will run again to offer my course. Students will be waiting. But uh, I would like to work as a mentor. I would be happy to mentor at least two of the participants. And then hopefully if I have a time, sometimes I will join in the training workshop as well, depending on my schedule. If I can find some hole, then I will be with you. Okay. So right this moment, that's all from me. Hopefully see you again. Okay. Thank you very much, Diwan. So I'm trying to call Claire, but Claire told me that she had a problem with her microphone. So let's see if it works. Hmm. Oh, maybe. Claire? Okay. Yes. Yes. You. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you and we see you. Well, that's good great. morning. So I morning I had to pick up my my uh, outside the microphone. So hi everyone, I'm very glad to join you for this session. Um, so I'm a professor in management science at the University of Nantes. Uh, my area is mostly in. Um, uh, information technology, marketing, and management. Um, I practice mostly um, uh, qualitative uh, subjective studies, and I am a member of uh, the research committee ethics. Uh, so that's the topic I will uh, discuss with you uh, on Thursday. So I'm afraid Benjamin is away. So I've, I, sorry, I was really short. <laughs> so no, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Thank you very much, Claire. Sorry, I had to wake up my children who did not wake yeah. up. It's like a, <laughs> pretty hard to do uh, two things at the same time. Thank you very much, Claire. I will now ask uh, Hia Pham to present himself. Yeah, uh, just one second to start my video. Yeah, here you go. Uh, hi, everyone. So, uh, my name is Phạm and I'm from uh, MIT University in Vietnam. Uh, I've been lecturing in information technology and supply chain management. And recently, um, I took, I participated in a, in a project that to do with um, and technology adoptions in agriculture farmer. Uh, particular stream farmer in the north of Vietnam. So that's why um, the school offered me a bit of this training to probably to get into the new area, you know, agriculture writings. Um, I mainly publish in cyber security and supply chain management. Um, so I hope that I can learn something from, from experts you know, in agriculture fields. Um, so hopefully we can get some good output from our projects here. Thank you. Uh, certainly. Thank you very much. Ketya Hoon, please. Uh, hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm hello. Katya. Hey. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Institute of Technology of Cambodia. Yeah, I'm from Cambodia. Uh, and I'm a PhD student now. And I'm working on uh, uh, irrigation infrastructure. And my field of interest is uh, about uh, 
it, it, it is related to uh, uh, development of uh, education standard in Cambodia and the uh, digitalization of uh, education uh, infrastructure using uh, BIM technology. Very okay. nice to meet you all. Yeah. Nice to see you again. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So now it's uh, Lan Huang. Sorry for my spelling. I mean pronunciation. Yeah. Can you see me? Yes. Yeah. My name is Huang from Graduate Academy of Social Sciences of Vietnam. Cause my major is economics, and actually, is I haven't I haven't wrote and. I haven't written any journal article before, so I'm here to be changed from the very start. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, again. again. Lei Kong. Lei Kong. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, Hello. my name is uh, Lai Kong. Yeah, I'm from Cambodia. From uh, Royal University of Law and Economics. Yeah. Okay. My, my field is in uh, management. Yes. Yeah. MBA in uh, management. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I hope I will learn some research method from the management professor in this uh, training session. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We, hope, we hope as well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Now, please welcome Li Lai, maybe Kwok Dang. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, hello. You're in the bathroom. I'm Li Kwok Dang. Actually, now I'm a researcher in Cần Thơ University and also a PhD student in Chiang Mai University. Uh, my background, actually, I think a little bit different with everyone. Uh, in uh, like social sciences, and I focus on how urban, um, how poor urban residents they are vulnerable in the urban flooding. So focus more on sociology. Yeah. Since I was working on uh, the paper with my professor, I am doing another paper. So that's why I would like to participate to learn from everyone. Thank okay. you. You you're not alone to work on uh, on more sociological issues. Don't worry, we are not alone. Oh, thank you. Uh, now I will call Narita Shaitima. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Um, my name is Narita Shaitima. Uh, you can call me and. Now I'm a PhD student in uh, social science, uh, Chiang Mai University, Thailand. Now I'm interested in about a transnational uh, Chinese student uh, who study abroad. And I want to know about how uh, they accumulate capitals in this area. I expect that um, this program will help me to improve my English skill and improve my writing skill too. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, well, um, now, maybe uh, Tan Lok. Tan Tan Lok and Wait. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tan Lok. I'm uh, currently is a researcher in the Climate Institute for Climate Change, which is um, a subordinate institute of the country University of Vietnam. Uh, my backgrounds uh, are the environmental management, and climate resilience, um, but uh, I'm focusing on the GS application and remote sensing, as well as the water resources management. And uh, uh, recently, I have uh, you know participated in uh, some kind of projects relating to water resources like uh, which can analysis and uh, the BGI infrastructure assessments in the, the urban and the coastal areas 
in the Vietnamese Mi Cung Biao Tour. And um, I'm very um, happy to join this kind of the training because uh, the content is very alluring and fascinating. And I would like um, to learn from everyone and, uh, and learn how to deliver and spread um, you know, the resource from uh, our uh, research. Uh, into the international papers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Nguyen. Nguyen and Nguyen. Oh, yes. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. have a problem in my camera. Yes. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hey. Can, can you hear me? We can hear you, we can see you. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I'm known from Vietnam Maritime University. Yeah, uh, from Vietnam. My background is about uh, environmental engineering, uh, with water treatment and uh, natural resource management. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank okay. you. Thank you very okay. much. T2 Chang and Yuan. Yes. Hi. Can you see me? We can hear you. We can't see you yet. You can't see me? Is no. okay now? No. no. I'm sorry. But we hear you, so. Can you see me? No, we can't see you, but uh, but please just just talk. <laughs> oh, we can see you now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Chang. I'm currently working at uh, the I'm a lecturer and researcher at the University of uh, Water Water Resources University in Hanoi, and uh, at the same time I'm doing PhD in RMIT Vietnam. Oh, okay. So my topic, yeah, my field is uh, water supply and sanitation. And also my PhD topic uh, about wastewater treatment and uh, management. So I'm excited to join you in this section. And I would like to learn how to write in a paper in the water sector. And uh, because I'm going to write that papers too. So it's very useful for me to attend this section from you. And I hope to learn uh, from participants here. And thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you will be able to conclude your paper at the end of the session. Yes, I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. Juan? Oh, hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. We hear you. Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, on. I'm a researcher, grad researcher, and in a uh, Rogan Institute, uh, the same place with Thanh Long. Yeah. Um, and also I am a PhD student in Kung Ho University and my major is about uh, environmental management and uh, now I am um, I uh, study about um, water resources and um, uh, how to uh, adaptation with climate change in my Kong Delta yeah okay. it's so all right Thank, thank you, you and I'm very happy and uh, I would like to thank you, you and uh, staff, um, friend and um, participate the webinar, the training course. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this is Python now. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pai Tun. I'm a researcher and a PhD student at Thomas Park University in Thailand. Uh, right now, I'm doing my dissertation on developing the model for uh, the 
I was the logistics provider for finance. Okay, I think you. I create opportunity that uh, I can join this uh, seminar. Okay, I can share my uh, experience and get the feedback from my uh, dissertation. So thank you very much. Thanks to you. Thank you very much. Fu Chan. Dr. Fu, I have two. Okay. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, nice to meet you again. I'm a, yes. I think I'm a, the luckiest here because I joined the every the training session for, yeah. from uh, what I see. <laughs> and now it's the fourth time I uh, joined the training session. I can see here many of my friends. <laughs> it's uh, very nice to uh, see you. See you guys. And uh, I am uh, who I'm from uh, Vietnam Maritime University. And uh, now I'm uh, head of uh, division of uh, maritime safety. And uh, I uh, already finished uh, doctor of engineering. And now uh, I just focus on the, the work at university and uh, uh, do some research. And uh, also I uh, join some. Uh, consultancy activity outside. So you can see in the in the biology, a short biology from me, I, I had to enjoy some uh, international project and uh, uh, this year I also joined a new project, two, two new projects and one is uh, focused on the marine coastal and uh, delta sustainability in uh, Southeast Asia and uh, one another is come from Australia and uh, it's the focus on uh, the improve the transport infrastructure in uh, and uh, I joined uh, at the specialist in the inland waterway uh, in uh, climate change. So uh, mm -hmm. I hope that uh, after the, this training session, we can uh, have some co-work or some co-research together so uh, nice to see you again, and uh, hope uh, we can do some more research in the near future. See you. Okay, yeah. thank you, Fu. Thank you very much. Nice to see you too. So it's uh, Putipong Julagasigorn. Putipong, yeah. Hi. 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 My name is Putipong Julagasigorn. I am. Uh, PhD student and a researcher at Tomasa University. Uh, my interest is about uh, decision making and consumer psychology. And my thesis is in the context of carpooling, carpooling behavior like that. Uh, what I want from this seminar is how to make me write things short and concise. That's the goal. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ruth, please. Okay, hey, uh, good afternoon, good morning everyone. My name is Ruth Bernoyong. I'm the Dean of Thomasat Business School and I'll be one of your mentors uh, for, for this particular session. Uh, my area of expertise is, is in logistics, transport, supply chain management. So I already made some choices. Benjamin has seen them. So I hope that we'll be able to get some journals uh, publication from this training. Okay. Okay, some connection troubles, but we heard you, I think. I heard you at least. Hopefully everybody heard you. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, Sidon Din from Nam. Please. Welcome. Good morning, good morning. and good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Sidain from Cambodia, uh, National University of Management. My area of expertise is in law. Uh, I'm happy to be part of this training, um, to be able to contribute to the work of the research team at the NUM, as well as the research network, uh, uh, in particular like this training session as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sidon. Now we have Sophie Belon, who should be 
Yes, I'm back. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Um, well, I'm joining the team as a mentor this year, and well, I'm very happy to see you all. Actually, I'm a senior lecturer in English for specific purposes at the Faculty of Foreign Languages and Cultures, the University of Nantes, France. And that's it. Okay, thank you. We just had Paula coming, but I uh, will first ask two to Chanok, to Chanok, to present uh, herself. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I am Pachanok Satayat Vinit. So my name is so long, so you can call me Pal. Just, oh. just my nickname, Pal. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now I am a PhD student at the Faculty of uh, Social Science in Chiang Mai University, Thailand. And my, I am working on uh, the topic about um, reproduction and women negotiation in uh, Vietnam, and fo my focus on the Hanoi area. Yeah, and so I would, I would like to, I would like to participate in this program because I think here is might help me improve my academic English skills writing, reading, or anything else. And thank you, you guys. And um, host, organize this program. Yeah, see you. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah. Um, I know two people arrived a little bit later than others. Uh, first of all, Paola Sepulveda, who is from uh, University of Barcelona. Uh, Paola, if you can hear me, can you Please present yourself briefly, just saying uh, who you are, where you are, and what you work on. I know it's early, but... Yeah, sorry. Sorry for the delay. No problem. I have uh, internet issues, sorry. Um, my name is Paola. I'm from Mexico. And I'm really glad to, to be here with all of you. Uh, I am Mexican. I'm 38 years old and I work in Barcelona University uh, since two years ago. And now I am a PhD student and my uh, research line is based nat natural based solution uh, as a treatment, water treatment system. Uh, and I want to be focused in a little village. And I don't know yeah, if I have, I have more time. No, no, it's fine. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Uh, we, we, we could not see you, by the way, but uh, we imagine uh, uh, that you are. Uh, oh, I'm here. <laughs> okay. See you now. Okay, so this is Paula, uh, guys. <laughs> Paula, guys. Uh, thank you very much. So hopefully I did not forget anyone. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, confused with uh, confused with all the names uh, moving in my list uh, on this uh, uh, on this screen. But uh, if I forgot somebody, please somebody just uh, wave. No, apparently everybody had the opportunity to present, so this is fantastic. Uh, no. You have, you're, oh, you're, 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 right. Sorry. <laughs> and, and we will have a board meeting about that. <laughs> okay, so this is Stefan because you were, you were too high up in the list. <laughs> okay, no problem. So um, I'm Stefan and I, I will work as mentor for this uh, training session number four. Uh, my background is uh, geography focus on tropical countries. And uh, I am the co-writer of this uh, European uh, project, WANASI. And I coordinate WANASI project for North University. Uh, I'm working also in a, a research project um, where we focus on nexus between uh, Inequalities and environmental changes in Sudeast Asia. That's it. 
and I'm based in Vietnam uh, since uh, more than uh, 20 years now. Okay, thank you very much, Stefan. Any more, any other people I forgot? No, good. So, uh, of course, we took a little bit more time than uh, what we expected, but uh, we're still uh, we're still pretty good in terms of time. Um, so I will uh, leave the, well, I was about to say the floor, but I will leave the screen to Emma Rochelle Newell, who, as I said, is our supreme leader for this uh, uh, training session. Um, and I will let her manage her time, keeping in mind that we were supposed to have a short break, but maybe in 15 minutes, if, uh, if you wish, Emma, you, you are uh, in charge now. Thank you very much to all, and, uh, and of course I stay here. Okay, well, thank you. And um, thank you everybody for telling us um, what, what areas you work in. It's, um, it's quite important so that I can have an idea of um, where you guys are, are coming from. So, um, during the, the presentation, I noted that one of you, I'm sorry, I forgot who it was, had said that they wanted to find out and understand what the differences are between national journals and international journals. Um, so I think this, we'll, we'll try and talk about that in um, today and also through the week, we can do that. Now, what we shall do is um, I, will, I will talk and I will present a little bit some slides and I will talk about, um, I'll try and explain the different points to you guys. And, and if you have questions, can you put them in the, the conversation box? And that way we'll have a little pause, we'll stop for a little while and um, we can come back to those questions. Now, something that interests me is knowing uh, for those of you who have some experience of writing, which sections are the most difficult, you know, um, or maybe, you know, which parts do you find the most difficult? Is it starting to write? Is it maybe writing an introduction, writing um, the discussion? dealing with references, how do we do that, looking at how we submit, how do we deal with replies to the reviewers, the editor's letter, things like that. If you, you know, you're free to say what you, what, where you find the most difficult um, aspects. Um, I, for me, I think probably the most difficult part is starting, you know, because you, you have to get motivated to start to write. It, um, I can't, I have been writing scientific articles since um, 1996. So yeah, it's a while. I've written maybe, uh, I've been either the first author or an active co-author on more than 60. And, you know, I think we have to be honest, it isn't always a pleasure but um, when it's finished and when it gets published, it feel really good. So you, you, know, you have to keep that in mind, you have to keep the end game in mind. And for some of you, I have worked in, I had worked in Vietnam, I still work a little bit in Vietnam. And I know that in some institutes, you get a, um, you can get some money from the institute when you publish. So, you know, maybe that's the motivation. It's not. For us in France, our articles are often what condition our possibilities of getting a promotion as well. So, you know, there's many reasons to, to publish articles. And we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, and um, I had sent you, oh, Benjamin, sent you a very short article, two pages. Um, I have to say, articles that are short like that are quite rare, but, you know, they still exist. And we'll have a look at that as well today. 
uh, what I'm going to suggest is we take the short break now before we start to look at um, some of the other um, items that are in the program for today. So we take a short break, five minutes, and then we'll start again and I will do some presenting of, of the slides. So please, if you want, during the break, you can put the sections that you don't you find more difficult, the ones that you like, the ones that you don't like, into the conversation box. And um, then we shall get on to the meat of the presentation for today. That's okay. Is that okay, Benjamin? It is perfect, Emma. Thank you. So we will take five minutes break, time for a short coffee, and then we get into the meat. Okay. See you in a bit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so we shall start with this um, first um, series of slides. Now, I wanted to present to uh, the, um, the general structure of a scientific article. And we're also going to talk about, to give you some hints on how to read and critique an article. Um, so I have two sets of slides and um, it doesn't bother me if you guys want to uh, um, if you guys want to have these slides, you can take them. I don't, I don't mind, and you can reuse them. And if you want, you can even use them yourself if afterwards you guys would like to use them in your university. I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't mind. It's not a problem. On Thursday, you guys are going to talk about intellectual property rights and plagiarism, but you know, I give you the permission to use them, so you don't need to bother about that. Okay. So let's go to the slide number two. Now, we often hear this, that people are scared of publishing in an international journal. And there's several reasons that I hear. It's too difficult. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. In the beginning, it's not easy. But I hope at the end of this series of um, webinars and afterwards the different the different parts of the training session it will be less difficult i've also heard they don't like people they being the editors the reviewers they don't like people from developing countries well that's not true um please don't let that bother you um it's not worth the trouble well we talked just before the coffee break about how it can really be worth the trouble um, you can have money for you, for your salary. You can get money for your laboratory if your institute does those things. And also it can help you for, um, um, in your promotions. And also because science is really about sharing results. And it's not just what you do. It's your results can have an impact on the future and on other people's work and so it's really important to publish it and so that everybody can work and build upon the previous results. I will talk a lot about knowing the literature, so understanding the articles published by other people in the odd domain and um, you, you, you will be part of that when you publish articles. So it's not just, there's not just individual gain or gain for your group. It's really a global thing. It's for everybody. The other one I get is my English isn't good enough. Now, yeah, we, I know it's difficult. I am British, so I'm a native English speaker but I have a name that is sort of half French. I also have a laboratory address that is French. I'm in, I work in Paris. I systematically get on my articles since I live in France that they need to be reread by a native English speaker. So, you know, you guys don't be so offended when you get that, because it happens to me and it happens to my Irish colleague 
who works in Paris as well. And so accepted. And, you know, you can always reply to the editor as I do a little comment, but um, what you can do is, is you can get someone to correct it, to reread it. And you can also, you know, get people to help you with that. So don't let that be an excuse. I also hear, I don't know how to write articles. Well, you know, after the end of this training session, that will be no longer an excuse. And I've also heard that editors from country X don't like people from my country, and so they refuse articles. Well, you know, I um, normally know it's not the case. Maybe very, 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 very rarely, but that's more related to um, um, ethical problems, in fact, in terms of the editor. You shouldn't be allowing personal preferences and positions to influence him. So don't worry about that. We have several different types of article. We have original articles. Those are the ones that we think about the most. Those are the ones that would be what you have for your thesis chapters or research articles about a specific um, series of experiments or um, models or, or something like that. We also have review articles. These are, of course, an article where you have done a review of the literature. Sometimes it can be large, sometimes it can be quite, uh, quite targeted. They are becoming more and more, um, I find, popular. We're seeing more and more of these review articles. They're very interesting because they can be a source for many references. We also have in some journals articles that are called letters to the editor, where somebody expresses a position. You find these often in um, some of the bigger journals like Nature or Science. Methodology articles. Methodological articles are very interesting because here you present a methodology that you have developed, that, the, that you're using, they can be articles that are short, they are relatively easy to write, and often, if it's a methodology that becomes important in your field, they can be cited a lot. Um, I have a methods article that is published in a very small journal, and it is um, cited frequently. So we now have data papers that are coming along. Um, these are short articles that provide data that talk about large data sets. Um, this, I haven't yet published a data paper, but I will be submitting one this week. And it's a short article, very short, very per, um, precise, no discussion. Um, the results, they're very short. And it can be also a nice way to publish data sets that are, that are lost somewhere, that lost, not lost, but are not in the public domain. Because, as I said in the beginning, science is about sharing, about um, exchanging data and exchanging what we, um, our hypothesis and our results. We also have editorial comments. That's when you make um, an article, you're discussing a paper of somebody else. And that, I have, I have never written those. We also have thesis chapters. In um, many universities now, the thesis chapters should present, look like um, a scientific article. Um, I like this way of writing a thesis because it's much more rapid for the student to transfer their uh, thesis chapter into a scientific article. So, um, there we go. Now, what I will talk about will be mostly the original articles because it's what we write most often in general. In, up to now, but I think the data papers are going to become something that is um, quite um, are going to take up much more of the literature that's published in the future. So, you know, 
that in mind. Now, when you write an article, there are some points that are extremely important. And the first is that you should write something that is an addition to the literature that already exists. Shouldn't be doing, you shouldn't be put writing or you should try to avoid writing something that has already been done uh, the same, the same thing. There needs to be something new. If not, you will have difficulty publishing it because your reviewers and the editor will say, but it's been done before. What's the difference? So you need to think about that. You have to have that in your head when you're writing. What's the difference? What's the novelty of this work? And to understand what the novelty is, you need to have read the relevant literature carefully. Now, I know it can be difficult for some of you to have access to, um, to adequate um, journal databases. I know they cost a lot of money. Nowadays, uh, there is a big movement going on towards open access. I have um, some personal opinions on open access. I think open access is the way to go, but I don't think it's correct that um, journals make us pay so much to have open access, but that's, that's my personal position. And um, we will give you some information about Research for Life. It's a way of having access um, to journal databases. So uh, Benjamin will send you that information. I will not talk too much about that today, but maybe on Friday we'll be able to look at that when we're in the um, bibliography section. Um, so you need to know your literature. You need to make sure you're not repeating what has been done before. Uh, okay. Now the format of your article, you will have a title page. This is, sounds so simple. And yet these are all different parts that you need to think about and you need to spend some time when you're writing doing them. None of this here is intuitive or automatic. And I think maybe that's an important lesson to have in writing papers. Writing a scientific article it is not intuitive, it's not automatic, and it's normal that it takes time. Um, even really big scientists that publish a paper a week, you know, in the beginning they had to start and it takes a lot of time. So we have a title, we have an abstract, we have an introduction section, we have the material and methods sections, we have the results, the discussion, Summary, the reference section, tables, figures, legends. You need to be uh, careful about legends because um, sometimes we forget and they're not very clear. Um, keywords, we should come back to keywords as well. The number of words. Sometimes journals ask you to put the number of words. It's becoming more and more the case for online publication. And of course, the corresponding author. Um, you need to decide who that is. The corresponding author, that's going to be the person that has all the interactions with the journal. Um, so it needs to be somebody that has a, um, an email address that is um, permanent, as permanent as possible because nowadays we use email for this, for all interactions with journals. And um, what, what, for example, when I have PhD students who publish, if they have an institutional address where they're doing their PhD, maybe it's not such a good thing because after this, they will go away and they will no longer have the institutional address. So maybe if they have a Gmail address, um, that would be the best. Either that or it's the PhD, um, the PhD director, supervisor, who becomes a corresponding author. But I don't, you know, it takes a bit away from the student. So please, you can think about that as well. 
I have here a example of a cover page where we have um, title, authors. Nowadays, you have to often say who did what. You have to give the addresses, the institutional addresses. This is becoming more and more um, structured in France because I don't know if any of you guys have been exposed to the Shanghai classifications, the rankings. All of our universities are now ranked class to see which is the best, which is not the best. And one of the things that gets, uh, that, that is used to identify the different universities, it's the address format. So that's a bit, um, that's a bit annoying, but anyway and um, corresponding author and keywords. So this is an example of how you would structure your first page when you are writing an article. You guys will have this in the PDF. So um, it's just to give you an idea. Your title, it needs to be informative, specific, comprehensive and accurate you need to give the most information, but with the minimum of words. Sometimes titles have a limited number of words or characters. Um, and you need to give, you know, the main issue of the study, the type of the study. Sometimes you need to, you should give, not sometimes, you should give the subject, but maybe not the conclusion, don't want to sell the subject too quickly and it's something that you'll go back to again and again and again and often when I'm writing you know at the end of the article go back and oh I have another little uh, tweak at the title so that it looks really nice so you can start with a working title and then you can um, narrow it down so you guys on Friday we're going to have we're, you're going to tell us what you're going to do and so um, you're going to give a title and um, maybe the title, it's not going to be the same at the end of the training session. So keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, it has to, has to cover the subject. Um, it also sets the scene for what's coming next. Um, you have to provide information about authors and co-authors. Now, I'm going to tell you the theory. And I know that sometimes in your institutes, uh, you can have um, certain um, situations where um, you have to, where it's the, the, the the general protocol that the head of the lab is a co-author on the article. This can happen. So maybe, I don't know, I have some quite um, strong opinions on this, but I don't, I don't work in the same context as you guys. So, you know. And maybe this is something that will be discussed on Thursday in the uh, area of intellectual property and author rights and things like that. So, um, Keep that in mind as I present this, but you need to, the authors, they need to have um, maybe had uh, uh, contributed to the creative thinking aspects, to the technical aspects, to the collection of the data, to the statistical treatment, um, to the writing, of course, to, um, to have been active in something around the article. Um, we have all had to face uh, somebody that comes up and says, um, oh, you know, that was my idea. You need to make me a quarter. Well, when you're the, the head author, the corresponding author, you, you need to uh, um, Think about that and put it into context and, and think, are you, do you, are you okay with this? 
do you really think it was his idea or his or her idea or are they just coming along and trying to you know steer in um in some of my well i will not be here on thursday but sometimes i do a class about intellectual property and plagiarisms and um one of the words i use is invading this is what i call invading people invade and try and take the course so you guys you have to decide and um, if you ever get into a situation that is really complicated I, I always recommend going and speaking to a, a senior um, researcher who, who, who's, who is quite independent and who can help you with that. But it happens to all of us. It's really, um, really a bad habit of some, some researchers. But anyway. And when you have multiple, multiple authors, I, um, there are two ways of approaching this. If it's easy to decide who did the most work, you can um, class the authors like that. There's another way of dealing with this is often what I do is uh, when it's me who's the, the, the head author. If um, I will put the, the youngest author first to get, because often younger researchers need these articles more for their CV and for their, their um, um, I want to use French word, dossier, whatever word, for their um, promotion um, requests than a senior author. So you can do that. And um, when you know, you can see what I wrote on the slide is sometimes you give one, if you have two articles, you'll have author one will be first for the first one and then second for the second one. You can do like that. That's often happened. What I do when I have a lot of authors and I have a lot of difficulty deciding the order, I do alphabetically. And alphabetically, usually um, when somebody reviews an article and they will see the authors alphabetically, it is clear that it was done alphabetically. Um, this helps to get rid of all of these discussions of I'm the, I did this and I did that and I should be first and he should be second and he should be 15th. Um, it's a way of um, cutting, cutting uh, short, rapidly discussions about authorships. This is probably the area where you guys will have the most discussion in fact, and it's usually not very um, objective. But don't let that stop you trying to write. I'm telling you all the bad things, but don't let that stop you. Of course, when it's a thesis and there are thesis articles, it's obviously the PhD student that should be the first. Um, and the most senior person, so the PhD supervisor, he's the last author. I don't know, I can't remember what it's like in Southeast Asia, but in France, um, if you are the last author on an article, it, um, it gets taken into account in your promotion requests. In, the, in America, uh, it's not the case. Nobody cares. It's um, first author or nothing. But um, in France, you know, and maybe I think in Germany as well, somebody told me. So you can keep that in mind. Now, this is something that is um, really easy for me to detect in English is the writing style. So if you have multiple authors, there's only one person that should write the paper. This does not mean that the other people cannot give you comments. But if they write you big sections of text, um, you need to read it and you need to make it yours because if not, there is a patchwork of styles. Some people are in the active voice, some people are in the passive voice, and um, it's really easy to detect uh, when you read it, when a reviewer reads it, and you know, it's not so easy to follow. It stands out and it looks, ah, it doesn't have flow, it's not smooth in the reading, and so you should try and avoid that. Now, um, I know this is the case for Vietnamese names. Um, you have a name like uh, 
uh, Lei Ti Huang, and we in Europe, we will call you Huang. And so you put your name Lei Ti Huang, and all the English speakers think that Lei is your first name. So you need to be really careful that you use the same name in the same order and that you use the same spelling. Uh, for example, if you're from Lao or from Thailand, you know, it's not the same alphabet as what we use in France. And um, so please be careful about that because afterwards, all those online search research, uh, search engines, they won't be able to find you. But what you can do is you can register your name with ORCID, you get a number, and when you will write your articles, you put your ORCID number and automatically the article is linked to your number. So even if there is, um, there are some spelling mistakes in your name, they know who it is. So it's one way of making sure that what is yours is uh, tagged to your name. I recommend that you all go to the ORCID site uh, um, and, um, and do that. Um, it's, it's free. It's, uh, um, it's not associated to any journals or, any, or specific journals. It's a way of having our own identification as a researcher. And it could be interesting, uh, particularly in countries where you have a lot of homonyms, so a lot of people with the same name. Just make sure that your articles are tagged to you and not to someone else or um, vice versa. Sometimes you have to provide a running title. A running title is often less than 40 characters for zero, so very short, giving a, um, an idea of the subject. And um, you have to provide keywords too. Now the keywords are words that are used by search engines to find your article. If you use the same words that you have in the title or the running title, the short running title, you are kind of wasting your money because um, the same word is there. And the search engines, they search title, short title, and, um, and the uh, keywords. So for example, if you have a title that is, um, I don't know, farmers uh, use of biogas in North Vietnam, that's your title. You would put in your running title something like um, agricultural biogas and your keywords you could have maybe I don't know um, let's say Sapa which is a town in North Vietnam that's where the work was done in my fake article you would have methane you would have maybe um, animal manure you would have um, household energy so you wouldn't have the same words so this is something that I see a lot is using the keywords that are in the title. So don't do that because you know, it's not forbidden, but it doesn't, you don't uh, use the most, uh, not, not optimizing the use of the words. The word count depends on journals. The data paper that I have to submit um, to my co-authors this week is 2,500 words. It's not a lot. And they recommend, if possible, less than 2,000. So you can see um, your articles can be short. Uh, sometimes you can go to 7,000 words. It gives you more, more room to talk and, ex and, and express. Does the title relate to our main concept, our theory that we apply for? Yes, you can. You could have um, something like if you're looking at um, pesticide use, you would have uh, maybe the name of a uh, chlordicone uh, um, reduces banana production in Madagascar. My titles are all fake, so 
Let me just say that. So yes, you can have um, needs to be needs to be clear what it's about, and um, you have to put your address as well. Now, I recommend when you are writing um, to do things in this sequence. There. It's for practical reasons more than anything else, more than intellectual reasons, but um, we won't teach it in this order, but it's when you have to do writing yourself. Think about it. Now, I'll explain why. So in general, I start with the material and methods. The material and methods sections are often the most easy to write. That's why I start with that, because it helps you. It's, you know, it's like a diesel car. You heat up the diesel car and then it starts. So it's to kind of get you going. Um, uh, ah, questions in the title. Oh, I don't like questions in the title, but some editors accept it, but it's rare. So hmm. maybe in social sciences, it's a little bit more flexible, but in um, data science in general, mm, I don't recommend it, but you can always switch the way the title is written. So it's not a question, but it's a statement. Um, so material and methods, then um, the results, but probably you've already started making up some tables and some figures and some illustrations. So you would do that. When I talk about results, it's writing them and also cleaning up the figures and tables so that they're in the right format. Um, then I do the discussion, the introduction, the introduction and discussion, you know, sometimes I go back and forth between the two, but it's really important to keep them linked, but not to be carbon copies. Welcome back. To that. And then in the end, I do the abstract. This is why the abstract is presented on Friday, because it's the final thing. And here I say, write the maximum information that you have. I mean, you write about um, what you setting the scene for the introduction, the material methods, the results, what you have, what you're going to put in there. You should write the maximum and um, also the discussion. Book. And then you do cleaning. I, I talk a lot about cleaning up the text. Cleaning is like rewriting. Uh, editing and making it flow better. Okay. Once you have finished, you, um, you must send your article to your co-authors. You must never submit an article without having informed your co-authors. What you can do, or what I often do, is when I send the article to my co-authors, I give them a deadline for when they need to reply. And if they, and I say, if I don't have a reply by this date, I will assume that you are okay with the work. You need to do this because um, the journals are now sending an email to all the co-authors to ask them to validate. Some before, I just used to get the email and I'd read it and I'd go, yeah, it's okay. Now they ask you to go onto a website and click, yes, I accept. So it's active. So if your co-authors are not alerted to the fact that there is an article, um, they can um, refuse it. And it has happened to me. Somebody rather um, over enthusiastically put my name on an article and um, it got submitted and I got an email from the journal and I was not okay with this article. I thought it, it should not have been uh, submitted because it was a um, double publication of a series of data, They're trying to dual publication. This is something you should not do. Um, and I wrote to the person and I said, you need to take my name off this. Um, if not, I am writing to the editor and I am going to tell them that why I don't want to be on this. You need to retract, so take away the submission. And they did that. So if it happens to me, it's going to happen to other people. And um, 
they probably might actually react like me. Um, you also, I also recommend at the end of when you've written it, you give it to somebody who has the experience of the reviewer and who can check your English as well and who can give you some general comments. It doesn't have to be somebody in the field. They just need to say you know, what they think because you all know this, is when you read something, you, um, after you've read something five or six times, and certainly if you've been writing it, writing the article for three weeks, and it's the only thing you've done, you, you, you do not know what you have written, because you, you read what you think you have written, but not actually what you did write. That happens to me in English, so I can imagine it happens to everybody. So you need to be careful do that. I really recommend that. Sometimes it takes a few more days, maybe a week, but it will gain you time in the long term and will probably reduce the chances of the article being rejected. Now, the common reasons for being having an article rejected is the article is not relevant to the journal. We're going to talk about that, how, to, how I pick journals. The article is not styled for the journal. It's not in the right format. Uh, or even worse, the experiment was badly designed. Now, that, there's no going back when it's a badly designed experiment, but you know, sometimes we just have to put some data in the bin and that's it. Huh? Um, the article is badly written. Normally, that will not be a problem. Um, ah. Conclusions are unjustified. We'll come back to that. But sometimes we have something we really, 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 really want to say, but maybe the data don't justify that. So yeah, you need to maybe revise that. And we have reviewer or editor bias. That means, you know, it's a subject that they don't, they hate or um, sometimes other reasons. It doesn't happen very often. I think in all of my submissions, my articles, because, you know, it might be 60 articles, but each one was submitted maybe three times on average. Maybe not three, three two, two times uh, on average. And um, uh, so, you know, we're over 100 submissions. I have seen it once, once. And so, um, bye, Claire. <laughs> and, uh, we, uh, so don't, uh, don't worry about that. And I think what, the message I really want to get over to you guys for this part is that when you start writing, um, you don't stop, you keep going. And it's not because you know, you, you fell off your bike once that you don't get back on it and keep riding. You have to. Um, because sometimes, you know, it gets rejected the first time. I have had one, one out of all of that, that was accepted as is at the first submission. And it was a chapter of my PhD thesis. So we're talking in the 20 to 25 year uh, timescale here. And um, it was a chapter that my PhD supervisor must have given me about six times to rewrite. So, you know, he played the role of the reviewer. It's the only time. And so you don't need, don't get discouraged when it gets rejected. You know, I've got articles that have been, I've written in the slide four times. I actually now have one that has gone to six submissions and now it's published and in a nice journal too. And we need to use the reviewer's comments to, to write a better manuscript because, um, in fact, it's, um, they, they do help. They do help. They help a lot, in fact. And we'll talk about replying to reviewers on Friday um, for that. So let me uh, go on to a short... series of how to read an article and how to choose the right journal. Um, choosing the right journal. So 
how do I choose the journal? I look at my subject. So for example, let me see what, what have I been doing recently. The impact of carbon dioxide on microbial carbon cycling. So aquatic ecology. I say to myself, okay, so aquatic ecology, uh, is it a wide subject or is it a narrow subject? Well, you know, this particular experiment, it's narrow. So then I go and I look at the journals that I have been reading, the journals where I, um, that I like, some of them I like more than others, you know, some journals I read only when I see an article that interests me, other ones I go and I look regularly to see what's been published in them. So right, that narrows me down into the field where I'm working, aquatic ecology, and um, I look and see what type of article they're publishing. Is it a data paper? Is it experimental uh, methodologies? Is it original on function, as a function of what I want to do? I don't look too much at impact factors. Now, there is the, the dicta of the impact factors in journals. Journals, uh, as a function of how many articles they publish, how many citations they have, get a, like a grade, which is called an impact factor. Um, Nature, Science, The Lancet, they have impact factors of like 40 or something. Um, small, small journals, Environmental Management and Assessment, has only an impact factor a factor of maybe 1.6. Um, you can um, you can um, um, decide what you want. Now, some institutes encourage their staff to publish in high impact journals, so high impact factor journals, and some don't care. Uh, some institutes look at the number of times the article is cited. Maybe that's more important than looking at the impact factor because an impact factor, it's the whole journal. Time cited, it's the article. So these are the ways of, looking, of choosing. And what I do, I, um, I avoid a lot of these um, new fee-paying open access journals for the moment, because there are a lot of, um, um, oh, arnaque. Um, oh, what is the word? A lot of fake journals that are stealing data and stealing money from uh, young researchers. Um, I realized that when I look I get emails, I must get about five emails a day asking me to publish in everything and nothing. You know, these really stupid journals. They ask me to, I work on aquatic ecology and they asked me to publish in obesity today. I'm like, what? I realized that I can, um, ah, scam, exactly. Thank you, Benjamin. That's the word. Um, I realized that myself, because I see them so often, I can tell when they're fake emails. But talking with some young African researchers, they were like, well, how can you tell? And one way you can tell is by how it's written. Often there are spelling mistakes. Often it's a field that is really far from yours. Sometimes they, um, they copy titles of articles and they put it in the body of the email. In general, if an editor contacts you um, for an article like that, you should not click on the link, you know, it's like all these scams. You can go and have a look and see what's written on the internet about the journals because we have a young African um, researcher in my laboratory who uh, was scammed for one of these journals. He, they stole his data. They stole $200. They published his data under the fake name and fake university, which meant that he couldn't publish his, his own data, his own article. So, you know, 
please be careful. You need to be careful with that. Uh, so somebody asked me, what does it mean a poorly designed trial? It means you have no replication or there weren't sufficient um, people in the cohort or um, the data is not comparable. It's, it's, it's a methodological way of um, looking at that. Maybe you did a, a social study and you just asked three people what they thought of something. Maybe that's not enough. Maybe you need more. And how to summarize the findings of other related researches and link to our research. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, we'll come back to that in maybe the introduction and discussion section. So tomorrow and uh, Thursday. Is it Thursday? For, no, tomorrow and Wednesday for that. We sh I shall note that. Uh, okay, so how can you read and how do you read an article? What I do, I take the article, I read obviously the title, read the abstract. I have um, I don't use uh, these things, you know, oops, these things much, but some people do. Some people really like them. I note the words in the abstract that interests me, um, interest me. And I read it, as they say, to get the big picture, to see what the global subject is. I um, look at some, maybe the terms and the techniques, maybe, maybe not. I um, read, uh, then I go to the conclusion section, I read what the conclusions are, then I look at the figures and the tables. If I see things that interest me, then I will start to read the article. As I go through, I note the points that interest me and I note the references that interest me. So I'll go back to the bibliography section and I will outline articles. Those articles, I will then go and look and then try and get them um, on the internet because um, it's um, you can read something but if you don't have the background to it it will be difficult to understand it then i will go and i will as i'm going through i will be reading i will be noting things and i um they ask, yeah, it's written here, what, does this, what are the problems the study is addressing? Is it important what they've done? Are, are the methods good? Do I agree with what they did in the methods? Do I agree knowing what I know about that technique? Perhaps, um, perhaps it's new, it's never been done before, but perhaps maybe it links to what was done before. So putting into the context, this is really important. And you read, and you need to put into the context of previous work, but it's also what you guys will do when you write, is that putting into context. You need to say, excuse me, you need to look at, is the study repeatable? That's what we were saying about a poorly designed trial. Can I do it? Can I repeat this work reading this article? This is super, super important in ethics and deontology. Uh, is, is the work repeatable? Um, what were the controls? And maybe you can write a small summary of the articles. I have a lot of colleagues who do this, who write three, four, five sentence summaries of the article. And um, you can even do that now if you use Zotero. Uh, Zotero, you know, I guess you guys know what Zotero is maybe, or EndNote. We shall come to that uh, next on uh, Friday, Zotero. Um, you can read the articles in Zotero and you can put notes on it. So um, this is um, what um, I, I tend to write on a piece of paper. I'm the queen of pieces of paper. My, my office is full of pieces of paper where I've made notes, but that's how I do it. But my colleagues, some of them write um, in Zotero or they'll write on, um, on a on a, 
uh, Word file or something, you know. So make notes, it helps you remember. And it'll help you keep the name of the article in your head when you're writing. So when you're going to cite it, you'll say, ah, right, uh, there's Boucle et al. He wrote that, ah, yeah, 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 I remember. So that would, um, that, uh, I think that's important. So we're coming to the end of the session here and I talked a lot more than I was going to. But anyway, that's all right because we'll come back to some bits tomorrow. One thing I, I, taught, I spoke about was research for life. So research for life will send you the information about that. Ah, excellent for, for uh, Kong. Um, sometimes you cannot get the article that easily. And what I do is I write to the famous corresponding author and I ask them to send me the article. Now I have prepared a letter um, that you guys can use. You copy it, stick it in the email, send it to the corresponding author to get um, to ask them to send you the article. And Benjamin will send you that document. I have several other little documents that you guys will get of, over the course of the, the week. So there'll be letters asking for um, free uh, open access fees. So when, a lot of these journals, when you want to publish now with open access, you have to pay. And it can be really expensive because some are like $1,200, $2,500, and there's even some that are $6,000 now. I'm a little bit against that, and so more than a little bit, in fact. And so what I propose for you guys is that you write to the editors and you tell them that you are from a um, developing country and that you want them to reduce the fees. And when I say reduce, I mean reduce to zero. But of course, you know. So uh, we, we have a letter that Benjamin will, will give you as well. Um, there are bits in yellow. Let me see, do we have, uh, where did I put it? Um, we shall show that to you tomorrow. Where can I partage the screen? Let me stop. So the letter, it's a written, um, it's a word file, and there are yellow places where you have to fill things in. The letter I wrote, it was for Burkina Faso, but you guys will just change your name of your country and you send it to the editor and, um, you know, don't, please don't be, um, don't feel like you're begging for something. These editorial um, housers are extremely rich and I think it's only fair that they participate in helping young researchers publish their research. Um, and make sure that you get high So uh, yeah. Now, um, one thing we didn't look at was the the short article that I sent you guys. Now I saw some of your homeworks, and um, we shall look at that rapidly tomorrow morning. Uh, about the, the different sections in the article. It will leave you guys some time to think about what we saw today, and then we'll identify the different sections. And those of you who haven't done the, um, done the homework from, that was meant to be sent this morning, maybe with what we talked about this morning, you'll be able to, to redo that. And there is a short homework for tomorrow, that Benjamin will, will, will present that. And so, um, I hope that was okay this morning. Now, if I spoke too quickly, please let me know for tomorrow. Because you know, it's kind of weird when you're talking on your own to your camera and you don't have any feedback, I have to say. So uh, you thank you for alone. your patience. You are not alone. We are all here. Uh, yeah, but you know. Drinking your words. <laughs> you guys are tired now. Thank you very much, Emma. Uh, I think it was very interesting and uh, I personally learned many things. Thank you everybody. Uh, as Emma said, um, 
um, for tomorrow for the ones who did not send the uh, homework today well yesterday please send it since you'll see that tomorrow morning we will start with the structure of an article but it's absolutely useful and necessary for you to send your homework it's not too late I, i've seen some of them sent it this morning but uh, some of, of them of you uh, are still missing and for tomorrow about i will write it in an email uh, later but tomorrow it's a very easy homework very short task just ask you to complete two qu two sentences the first one is my, the, the research question of my article is blah, 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 blah. So formulate your research question. Obviously, uh, the majority of you have it, must have done this exercise many times. And anyway, it's a very important exercise. Don't uh, complete this sentence with uh, hundreds of pages, just short sentence. My research question is blah, blah, blah. And second sentence is the hypothesis of this research is blah, 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 blah. Meaning my research question is this and the hypothesis I formulate about the answer of this question is that, okay? I will write it in an email later on so that at least you have some uh, words on it. So it is nine, uh, two o'clock for you, nine o'clock for us. So thank you very much, friends. Uh, I'm very happy to see that you almost, all of you uh, remained on this Zoom um, uh, workshop meeting. And uh, thank you, Emma. Thank you, uh, Stefan and other trainers. And I wish you a good afternoon, a good day for us in Europe. And I see you tomorrow, okay? Hopefully. Yes, bright and early. Tomorrow, it's one, one uh, half an hour earlier than today. So it's, yes. it's uh, 11.30 okay. for you. All right? Yes. And if you have questions, you can send these questions. Don't hesitate a minute if you, if you want to say something. We will try to, to look at it and answer it the day after. And, uh, and this is very important if you have questions. Like I see Stefan has a question. Uh, no? Yes, and w what you guys can do is you can also send um, which sections you found the most difficult. I know it's, it's quite, uh, it's not too easy to write that in front of everybody. So, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay, to send ah, I missed a comment from uh, Dan. Okay, I shall note that for tomorrow. What is the comment? Uh, part of the introduction is most challengeable and difficult. Uh, writing the introduction is complex because you need to have a strong frame framework. Yes, absolutely. I wholly agree. The introduction is, seems so easy and so innocent for writing. Oh, I have mosquitoes here. Who believes that? Good goodness me. And, um, you know, it's don't, so, don't underestimate the introduction because you can kill an article with a bad introduction. That's, that is so true. And, and, uh, so and true. I would like to know how, when you write the introduction. Personally, I always write it at the end. Yeah. So um, people write it at the beginning, so. No. If you write it at the beginning, you're going to rewrite it at least six times, I think. I agree. Yeah. But, you know, I will tell you that my secrets for writing is when I write, um, I do versions, one, two, three. Sometimes I go to version 29. And sometimes I go back to the early versions and I take sentences that I like and then I put them, you know, I move them around. So. Good trick. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I have five hard drives, so maybe it's not such a good trick in the end. But anyway. <laughs> okay, guys. All right. Bye. Thank you. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye bye. Thank you, Emma. Bye bye. You're welcome. Hi, everyone. Thank you.